Ramble. Thank you to Priceline for sponsoring today's episode. Mm-hmm. Rainey, what are you doing to your hair? I'm sort of flouncing. How does it look? You're flouncing? What does that mean? It means like giving, you know, making it look better. Flouncing. Like giving it volume. And so when you have you flounce, you are flouncing and then you've, once you've done it, you've flounced. Is this live? <laughs> yeah, it should be. We're live. Tell me about yeah. the flounce. Yeah. Well, the flouncing, here's the whole situation about hair is you're trying to get bigger. Yes. Always want bigger oh, hair. Oh, girl, preach. <laughs> yeah. So I'm try- sort of flouncing, getting ready for my audio format yeah. production. Now, am I is am I flounceable? Yeah, your hair is flounced right now. <laughs> it, I'm already am flounced. Yeah, you already flounced it. Yeah, it seems like you're flounced up. Wow. You're flounced. Miles isn't flounced, but he does look sharp. Well, but I got a haircut. You're greased. So- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You've kind of got like the constant no, 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 slick no. look. You, sort of the, you look do like. Do you think my hair looks greasy today? Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like the thing you're going for, right? Oh my god! You have like the I'm a new dad, I'm and not or I'm going just... for a greasy look. <laughs> what the fuck kind of thing to say is that? You've got like the unkempt, wrinkled white shirt that's like a little stained. Like you're going for like greasy boy. We got to take five, and we don't even have five to take. Wow. Yeah. What look do you think you're serving today? I think I'm serving chic internet bad boy <laughs> who's got a nice <laughs> linen white shirt on. Okay. You know what I mean? This, I mean, that. what did I say? I, I think the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you look like a bellhop who won the lottery. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the drive on where today we're picking on each other apparently. <laughs> Miles Mm -hmm. has the vibe of a five-year-old who wished upon a genie and is now in an adult body. Yeah, well, (laughs) that's true. It's not an insult. That's a compliment. That's a compliment. You have a childlike innocence. I have a child, and uh, I woke up early this morning. (laughs) Yeah? Hence the greasy hair. You know what I like is that I'm able to text you early, and you respond. (laughs) I'm, like, up doing shit. I texted you at 7 a.m. Was that 7 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, I was up. Uh Uh-huh. Big time. I had been up for a while. Uh, what did you tweet? What was it? Oh, you did send me a tweet or and it's something. It's about a, a Twitch streamer. Oh, it's some like a real person. cringy clip. And I believe I responded to it by saying, well, maybe I don't want to say <laughs> it on the show. But it was to the effect of everything in the internet is bad. Yeah. I, you kind of like, were like supporting no. widespread no. famine and yeah. death and destruction. Definitely. Yeah. Miles is kind of like Ozymandias at the end of uh, Watchmen, where Watchmen. he's like, maybe we just start things over. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. What do you guys think about the new Megan Trainer song? Oh, boy. I'm glad we're talking about this. <laughs> It really Call me mother. mother. <laughs> it is like it is a parasite that is dug deep yeah. into my brain. You know, in the mummy, the scarabs yeah. that crawl under your skin. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel like that song has done to me. And yeah. I don't mean to be rude or mean, but I think it's okay to be mean. Because really? I, <laughs> That's interesting. Because I don't get the impression that that song was made from a genuine place of of care. Yeah, I think it was engineered. Really? Yeah. To be an earworm and to infect our TikTok streams. Well, if it's so easy, then I think we should make one right now. Miles, I thought you never asked. You know, and so if we were going to make a song that was sort of a viral hit, yes. what would the hook be that's something that's sort of pop culture, it's yeah. Gen Z? We start with the Sandman. We start with well, Sandman. Um, um, I think we have to sample our own Because she samples it, so we have to sample something else that's <laughs> in the Sandman category. Okay, so okay. a nice 1950s ditty. Yeah, yeah. Bum, 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 Cry if I want to, uh-huh. cry if I want to, yeah! Cry, cry, if cry, 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 I cry. like to cry, uh-huh. I'm a sad little boy, yeah. I'm a sad yeah. little boy, cause yeah. it's my party and I'll cry, 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 I'm a sad little boy, sad, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> Why have we not addressed that? I'm sorry, I, sh- <laughs> I, I brought the levels back to where they used to be and I shouldn't have... Sorry, yeah, that was really loud. Oh, we had the song of the summer, too. That was going to be a pop. That was a pop hit. If you could be a pop star, yes. what would be your favorite place to go? 
place to go to sing. You know what I mean? By the way, so I was out to dinner and I started asking Maggie inane questions. Like, if you were a dinosaur, what would your favorite color be and why? Yeah, I like that. So I like this. If I were a pop star, yeah. where would be my favorite place to, to sing? To sing. To go and sing. Morocco. Interesting. Rainy? Los Angeles. Because then I just wake up. Go. Honestly. Uh, okay. Sleep in my own bed. Honestly, yeah. bad answer. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> well, actually, this is a good LA question. LA has ungrateful crowds. You I think, think so? That, yeah. They're spoiled. I've, They're spoiled kids like you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little brat. I think you want to go somewhere where like they get good acts and they've got like a good scene, but like not all the time. Yeah, you want right. to go somewhere where they're hyped. Denver, to see you. Denver, Shout hometown out. glory. KC brings the noise. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like yeah. That. Well, guys, um, I feel like we've uh, we've really softened the show. Yeah, and you know the numbers have taken a hit, and that's why I have a segment that's going to raise our relevance. Are we? Not doing well? Everything is bad. <laughs> and Zach, you know what it is? It's not that we're not doing well. It's that we used to have the spice you mean, you of mean. a fresh internet <laughs> scandal. Okay, yeah. And now we're just sort of talking and being charming and enjoying yeah. each other's company. So we I, need scandal. We need controversy. We need okay. problems. And so mm -hmm. that's why I've developed a segment that we like to call Digging for Controversy. So I'm going to oh, ask yeah. a series of leading questions for us to answer <laughs> in an attempt to just really spice it up and get the algorithm to take what our thoughts are, make them inflammatory, and then let freaking Mammy Joe from Wisconsin listen to this show because it gets on her YouTube homepage. These takes are about <laughs> to be like my bowel system. Inflammatory. <laughs> Don't you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Just the, end, just the end of it. Here we go. Oh, that was good. I like the quieter. first time. It just sounded like a little... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, like a little meow. All right, the first question. Here we go, guys. Here we go. We're about to enter the hot zone. <laughs> mm, is Meryl Streep biphobic? <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I think she's played a lesbian. I don't have well, any. That I don't have any. <laughs> this is the thing. I don't have any evidence for this question. I just am asking Zach. Are you biphobic until proven innocent? That's a good question. This yeah. cul culture these days is, you know, come on. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just asking out there, is it possible? Meryl? You know what, Miles? What's that? No. No. She was in Mamma Mia, therefore. That's right. Yeah. We, give, we know therefore, that she's an ally. There we go. See, and the, again, our lives don't have to be lived controversially. So. We're just asking questions. We're just asking questions. <laughs> We're just asking questions. <laughs> it's a spicy question. Is it Meryl is Streep, and for a second you're going, oh no. <laughs> is beloved Academy Award winner Meryl Streep biphobic? I don't want her to be. Hopefully she's not. We, and, and by the way, we also hope that she's not. We yeah. hope. But someone has to ask these questions. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't, who will? That's right. If not now, whom? Then. <laughs> Selena Gomez versus Haley Bieber. And before we answer, Ooh. Rainy Toll has the story. Rainy? Yes. Okay. Thank you for giving me the floor on this. I've been hoping to address it. Essentially what had happened is that Selena Gomez posted some random photos and she gets... <laughs> Fuck! She gets a bunch of hate because the internet, as we said, is a scary place. Uh oh. What photos did Selena post that got hate? I mean, she obviously looks amazing. Like sure. she she doesn't look bad, but like people are just like Selena. Yeah, Selena. Like people like like to control. They're like, you don't look how you looked when you were sixteen, and it's like, yeah. She's okay. This yeah. is ludicrous. And it's <laughs> no, right? yeah. She's I, like I, a supermodel. I've like, she's never so once beautiful. looked at her and had anything no. but positive. Of thoughts. course not. No. Yeah. yeah. Selena Gomez. Um and she's my wizard. Oh, Waverly. Is <laughs> yeah. she Ramona or Beezus? I don't remember. She's Beezus. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's also, she's on a medication for lupus, yeah. which I know has caused her to gain weight, and people are critical about that, which like, fuck. Yeah. All yeah. the way off. Very well. Yeah. Yeah. So then Haley Bieber posts this TikTok, and it's like, I'm not saying she deserved it, but God's timing is always right. And so obviously- don't you, don't you bring God into this. So hang on. So, <laughs> so is that- so she posts this, people mm -hmm. are thinking it's about Selena? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and I was, also yeah. know, if I may, Rainy, yeah. I saw that Selena got her eyebrows yes. feathered and then over laminated. Over laminated. Yeah. And ha- she made a joke about it. She was like, oh, I got them over laminated. Like, she's like owning it. And then Haley and Kendall? Kylie? Uh, I think it's one Kylie. One of the Jenners? Yeah. Yeah. They had a FaceTime screenshot where they were like making fun of eyebrows and people were like, oh shit, oh shit, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. I dove into this deep and then people started digging up the hit. Here's, yeah. Okay, you want to talk about internet yeah. drama. There's something in the air mm-hmm. where we all want to be little sleuths. Mm-hmm. And I, we certainly experience that. We certainly that. know about that, don't we, Zach? Um, but even with this scandal, like people love digging. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Like people love, yeah, trying to be internet detectives. I, I don't. Because it's kn- so rewarding when you're like, yeah. I haven't left my couch, and yet I've uncovered something <laughs> secret. I've yeah. cracked the case. I've cracked the case. So what did they crack, Randy? Because they found all this old yeah. Harry Bieber shit. They found so. So essentially, they're like, oh my gosh. Hailey Bieber is obsessed with Selena because there's like stuff of her holding a J14 with Selena on it. There's Do you stuff know about like, this part, Miles? No. Oh, this is good. Photos of Hailey Bieber being like a fan, like trying to get auto- an autograph from like Hailey or from Selena and Justin. Oh, wow. And then there's like all sorts of, once she starts dating Justin, there's a ton of like, she's making like the same outfit, the same hair and... Then Justin also, so he has a Selena Gomez tattoo yeah. on like his right forearm right. and he's taking photos left and right and like with it, with his sleeve rolled up and people are like, whoa, It'll, it's like only that <laughs> one sleeve. Well, what really I thought was crazy. So yeah, there were all of these photos of Selena wearing an outfit <laughs> and then years later, uh, uh, Haley wearing the exact same one. That's super funny. But yeah. then there was like side by side interviews of Selena would say <gasps> yeah. a quote in an interview, <laughs> and Haley would say the exact same fucking thing. Yeah, Weird. So it's like, did you just single white female this girl's life? Yeah. But then what's also crazy is that people are turning against Haley, and I'm like, I'm sorry, she won. She is the fangirl dream. Are yeah. you telling me oh, yeah. that all of you would not do the same thing? Who would not? Yeah. Any? This is. Anyone who grew up loving your favorite pop star, mm-hmm. she's living our dream. And yeah. you know what we do? We turn on people who live our dreams. Interesting. That said, the whole thing is like total <laughs> cuckoo bananas. And yeah. then at Beebsy's birthday, yeah. uh, you know, Justin's a good friend, obviously. He and I go way back. Yeah, a well, friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Bieber. I well, mean, you're really Christian, right? Super, <laughs> super Christian. Yeah, we met at church. <laughs> uh, I've made this joke, joke before and people are like, wait, is Zach really good friends with Justin Bieber? And the answer is yes, we are yeah, best friends yeah. um, from church. Uh, but at, <laughs> <laughs> at, at Justin's birthday, this is like in the middle of your wife being dragged to yeah. shit by the internet. Yeah, He gives out a keychain at his birthday with the inscription, I'm paraphrasing, but it was basically, I'm glad I didn't get in life what I thought I wanted. And it's like, I'm sorry. Every The internet is oh running rampant with rumors that you proposed to Selena Gomez. She said no. And then two months later, <laughs> you proposed to Haley. Was um, it two months? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, they were That's different two months. Whack. And now your, your big response is glad that that other person said no. I didn't know that part. That's devastating. Good. See, this is the wow. kind of internet drama <laughs> that I'm here for. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is like, Haley Bieber was just being a bully. Like, mm. she was just, like, body shaming. It's like, don't take that stance. Yeah. But I do think that the internet, I do worry it's gone do a mean, little far. Do you mean? Do you yeah. mean to Haley Bieber? Yeah. I mean, look. Well, I don't know. I, I, the internet can be a cyber bully sometime. Yeah. And least, I don't, yeah. I, like, Haley Bieber doesn't seem to, is she saying anything now that's like, no, for real, it's not real? She's saying, she, of course, like, on her video, she was like, no, that wasn't about Selena, that was just a coincidence, you know, but it's like, ugh. Oh, and then yeah. another crazy part is Jordan Woods, who got in that huge fight with um, Kylie Jenner. Do you remember that whole I've thing? I've never heard this name, Jordan Woods. Oh, my gosh, yeah, so she essentially, <laughs> yeah. And this is fact-checked, right? <laughs> You know what? Because Rainy has history. Yeah. Well, I guess now's a, as good a time as any for me to apologize yeah. to Rainy. Because while I was gone, yeah. it sort of was uncovered that I, that Bo Burnham and Phoebe Bridgers. <sighs> we've talked, we've discussed And I know this. you've discussed it, but I figure I never personally apologized to Rainy Thank you. for lambasting her. She did call it a polycule, which doesn't seem to be the case, but 
We don't know. You thought it was a poly. You thought Bo Burnham, Phoebe Bridgers, and what? Maddie all Healy were all, were all fucking. Interesting. No, I think I had heard that. Um, we should move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about what you accidentally heard. <laughs> my travel happy place. Actually thinking about my wedding. I had all my friends come down to Mexico. It was magical. It was sunny. It was beautiful. Got to dance the night away. And now I want you to think of your happy place, whether it's the sun, the sand, the slopes, the big city, or that town you just explored, we all got one. And Priceline wants to get you there and help you travel to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. From Miami, Vegas, Cancun, Paris, and beyond, Priceline can save you up to 60% on select hotels, along with flights, rental cars, cruises, and more all around the world. It's easy. You search, book, and go. I'm actually headed to New York to see Keith, to see his show, uh, and I was able to buy tickets using Priceline. Saved me so much money. See for yourself why millions of people trust Priceline with getting them to their happy place at a happy price. Go to Priceline.com slash the tripod to get your happy place. And as a special offer for tripod listeners, Priceline is giving you 15% off Hotel Express deals with code TRIPOD23 when you book before May 1st. Get on it. Um, but no, so this is, uh, this is old news actually, but <laughs> this is the old news made out with Chloe's boyfriend. Couldn't care. This is so funny. Cause I, yeah, I don't know who Chloe I don't know. is. I just <laughs> keep, the, the only reason I like this Chloe. drama is because the names are so, like the fact that it's Selena yeah. and Bieber right. makes me like yeah. lean in. Yeah. But once you get into Chloe and Jordan, I'm out. Who's Jordan? I don't care. Exactly. You know, but, I, but you know what's I, interesting I, is the Selena. I just have been seeing so much stuff that's like Selena. It'll be like a post that's like, oh my God, wag, 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 Haley Bieber. And it's like 2.4 million likes. What's happening on TikTok? It's, yeah. fu- it's fuel. Um, I think we're about to hit the summer, summer of Selena. I think Selena Gomez, I mean, yeah. she's always been d- doing it right. And uh, she's about to keep doing it right. Also, she made a good move by being in that show. Only murders. Yeah. Oh, my or are you gosh, talking about Selena and Chef? That. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking about Selena and Chef. Yeah, no, I was talking about Only Murderers. Yeah, um, I will say though, Thirteen Reasons Why, not good. Didn't uh, like that. disagree. <laughs> okay. It's Selena- a show that has good morals, and every episode <laughs> is a moral lesson. Is Selena Gomez in that show? No, she pro- yeah, executive she's, produced she's, it, quote unquote. She didn't do anything for it. Yeah. Just yeah. I am kidding, by the way, because people don't understand that. <laughs> but I, I think that Thirteen Reasons Why is problematic. Yeah. And also amazing. in the news, this is just a news roundup. This is just a gossip roundup episode. Yeah. Well, I have other um, hot controversial questions. <laughs> oh, um, oh, we're in a segment? Yeah, we're sort of in a segment. <laughs> but what I like about the show is it, we're always in a segment. We're always out of a segment, but you can go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. All right, here we go. You want me to go ahead? No. I'll go ahead. <laughs> Are cigarettes really that bad for you? <laughs> we're just asking we're the question. We're just asking the controversial question. And I want to just everyone go around and give your history with cigarettes. Yeah. Have you ever smoked a cigarette? Yeah, I've smoked a cigarette. What? But it's not cool to do. Oh, did I bet you looked pretty cool. I mean, probably. It looks really cool. Probably. But in yeah. like at the end of high school slash college some. Is mm. it unethical for us to talk about this when kids listen? Do kids listen? Good question. If you're a kid in the comments. Shout I, out cigarettes are gonna... cigarettes are gross as hell. Okay, here's a real yeah. story. Yeah, this sure. is this is the the best anti cigarette PSA Uh-oh. that you can ever have. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so it. Fuck! <laughs> Why was that one so much louder? I don't know. Shit. So at my wedding, yeah. one of my good friends, I think she'll let us say, Kelsey. <laughs> if not, hopefully I'll, she'll let us say. If not, then it I'll, depends on what you're gonna say. That, well, if not, we'll ask her afterwards, and if not, we'll keep out this part, and I'll just yeah, say okay, my good friend. It, yeah. She made out with one of my high school friends. Oh, yeah. And it was pretty cool. Not many single people at my wedding. Sure. There was very slim pickings, but guess what? She found them. They made out. <gasps> they were going to go all the way. Oh, God. <laughs> and then she saw him step aside for a cigarette break. Right. And she said, game fucking over. This is in the episode of Guilty Pleasures, too. Yeah. Okay, sick. Love it. <laughs> so, and we were like, whoa. What and I'm like, tell me more. Like that's such a funny reason to be like, yeah, I'm not fucking that guy. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> what she said is like, I'm not gonna make out with somebody who smokes cigarettes. And I'm like, was it just 
that he now tastes gross? And she said, no, it's a character flaw. I think that's whack and classist maybe. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I also believe my response to her, go listen to that cocaine and bear episode of uh, Guilty Pleasures. But I believe my response to her was, that's what you draw the line yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cigarettes are silly. Yeah, I don't know. I, the vaping is really crazy. You know what I'll say to kids out there? Hey, kids out there. Um, vaping is like still pretty bad for you. Oh, it's so bad. So like, be real careful because I I know that it's yeah. like I feel like there was a draw, line drawn in the sand at some point that was like, well, vaping's actually pretty good for you. But the no, problem is, you can no. vape inside, so you're actually vaping way more than you would have smoked a cigarette. Even though uh-huh. there's a crazy is- chart where we had almost fully eradicated teen yeah. smoking, oh, man. and then like it was like almost gone, and then the vapes yeah. came and it. Freaking skyrocketed. No, it's tough. Yeah. Vaping's bad. Isn't it way more nicotine in, in a vape? Than yeah, it's yeah. a concentrated nicotine yeah. versus um, like the stuff that's burning off. Anyway, next question here. <laughs> um, okay, trolley problem. Yes. How would you <laughs> would how would you do it? Do you <laughs> how would you do it, Rainy? Okay, so the trolley problem, classic ethic, ethics right. problem. Okay, on one side, yeah, me and Miles. Mm-hmm. On the other side, mm-hmm. international superstar Bono. Well, she doesn't know Bono. Yeah, that's going to be <laughs> But he's easy. an international superstar. I guess. <laughs> now, the Charlie problem, are, are we going to give her several different Charlie problems? So first, to go ahead, Bono or me and Zach? And the, yeah. the train's going towards me and Zach, so you'd have to switch tracks yeah. to save us, but you'd kill Bono. I think um, I would definitely switch the tracks. <gasps> Yeah. Wow. And really? A life to you, a life to you. Wow. Yeah. With or without you, Bono, you're dead. So then Bono's yeah. family is sort of like, you killed. Yeah, I don't get the trolley po- problem. I don't think it's complicated at all. <laughs> Every time you plug your phone into your car, <laughs> you're going to hear the voice singing of a man you murdered. That's right. Because you well, two was downloaded onto your phone. it's just a numbers game, baby. Well, Rainy, speak on that. Two minus one equals one. Okay, so interesting. So more people means good. Yeah. Okay, well, they're so all me- actually serial killers, so... You and Zach... <laughs> No, no. The trolley problem typically is, okay, yeah, there's people on a track. Uh And I believe the idea that in the trolley problem, they say they're people that cannot hear. So you can't warn them away and they can't see the trolley coming. Uh And you have a decision to move them off of a big group of people to kill one person. But the idea, the argument, some people say, is that by actively moving it, you're killing someone else. You're just making a decision. And that uh, what you're describing is utilitarianism. Great, uh, most good for the most number of people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Rainy, me and Miles, or a baby? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, One baby versus two adults. Me and Miles, or a baby? Chugga, 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 choo, choo. Rainy quick, the train's have- coming. Three. Two. One. I think I'd do the baby. You kill the baby? I think so. Yeah. Wow, Rainey's really... Rainey's what would it. you guys do? She's pragmatic. It's a good question, because I think to me, I I probably would do the same. Easy. I would live and make more babies. But it also... <laughs> nice. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're putting out what you're getting in. A baby can't make another me and Miles. That's a good point. But I can make another baby. Interesting. <laughs> well, you know what I'll say is, <laughs> I think I would... If I knew anybody on the track, I'd, I'd, I'd switch it. But that's like the that's the human flaw because right. actually we're not robots. Like it's like greatest good for the greatest number. You know what's actually really interesting that people yeah. don't talk about <laughs> is that um, <laughs> Teslas are like self driving cars, etc. Yeah, uh, are now being tasked with this question yeah. because it's Whoa. they say if your if their car is going to collide with something, does it save the driver? Oh, who who owns the vehicle, or does it save like a big group of people on the sidewalk? and drive up onto the sidewalk and hit the people and save the driver. So it's like you oh kind of gosh. do with self-driving cars have to program in a response. And I believe that typically uh, they save the driver. Yeah, this <gasps> is a years old problem, but I don't know if they've ever fully solved they, I mean, it. No, it's just a philosophical yeah. conundrum. Really. <laughs> a years okay, old. how many babies is it going to take to kill me and Miles? Probably two. Two. Well, I mean, but I do agree it's that... Even. Yeah. Lainey, you don't know those fucking babies. I know, that's what's complicated. Uh, Four babies. Four babies. You're even entertaining it. You're a monster. Why are you even? How why are you even talking about? Yeah, this, no, I probably say the babies. But then, like, whose babies are they doing? Exactly. Now do I have to take care of them? Hitler's babies. No, you're not having to take care of the babies. Okay, they go with their parents. I guess. Yeah, they go yeah. back. Bad to parents, death. though. They left them on a train track. My, here's parents. my my, th- my big thing with the trolley problem is it's like doing nothing. Everybody makes such a big deal. Well, now you killed it. It's like well, you, no, doing nothing is I, also. Uh, 
I think if you That's froze, you yeah. would not be responsible. I think you would be. Really? Yeah. Those who stand by and do nothing are equal perpetrators. Interesting. In the eyes of God. I this learned that at church with beads. If you, fr if you freeze consciously, like, I mean, if you freak out and you're like, wait, what? What's going on? What's going on? Trying to figure it out. Then I think that's different than like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to, I'm absolving myself. I don't want to touch it. I mean, Rainy, you, can, you yeah. can tell yourself whatever lie you want, but God knows all. That's right. <laughs> and just like, well, you met JB in church. Yeah. You, you, tell us about that. <clears throat> you were in church and what did the church yeah, say about the, the Charlie problem? That day? We were eating the body of Christ. Nice. As one does, yeah. just munching down bread on rainy. that. Yeah, that's bread. That's, that's bread. And that's you bread. add some cheese or what? Yeah, it was ciabatta. <laughs> ciabatta, yeah, <laughs> with the mozzarella, <laughs> with some grilled cheese. Christ had a really oh, delicious man, the, body that day. If church gave out grilled cheese, I think uh, more people would go. Yeah, <laughs> I would do that. Bread and body, but by the way, blood about uh, tomato soup and grilled cheese. How have they not thought of this? <laughs> Next question. I think we've successfully answered it. Okay. Zach, do you ever regret uh, making up the scandal for views? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Hi. <laughs> no, uh, it's just a question. I just asked it. We'll move on. I am Reddit poster <laughs> secret panda <laughs> underscore 9532. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, last question here. Yeah. In retrospect, this one's just for Zach, but I'm curious if Rainy has an answer too. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I was going to be like, when you were first diagnosed with a closing spotlight, <laughs> Rainy does not have an answer. Um, in retrospect, is there a trend or a video that you wish you had participated in to make you more famous? <gasps> like a YouTube trend or like when you first started the company, did you wish that you had started like, I don't know, doing something weird that like then became popular in retrospect? Slime. You wish you had gotten into the slime world. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like an artist. You're like a director. You're yeah. Like, you just made like a really thoughtful short film about your pain. And I feel like the one regret you have is that you didn't get into slime. I look at myself in the mirror <laughs> every day. Yeah. Sure. I look at the life that I've built, the man that I've become, the awards, the <laughs> accolades, the webby, the television shows, <laughs> this company that I've built, the meaningful content. And I would trade it all for slime. Wow. That's good. So like it would be like a farting slime, like you make it Yeah, fart. no, so you put your hand in it, <laughs> and <laughs> it goes like, <laughs> and then sometimes you put the crunchies in it, and it goes. Oh, I thought you wanted to be on Kids' Choice Award. Don't you even. Yeah. A Kids' Choice Award would mean a lot. <laughs> Do you know? My friend Matt, my friend Matt Bennett, um, uh, huge shout out. Name drop. Brag that you have a friend. Not, bra not to brag, um, but he's on, he was on the show Victorious. He played Robbie. Oh, right. Um, he came and did something with me and my friend Eric, who was on Guilty Pleasures, and he brought his Kids' Choice Award, and I got to hold Fuck. it. Fuck. It was pretty fucking cool. Okay, the Kids' Choice wow. Awards were last weekend from when we were recording this, and mm -hmm. Rosanna Pansina went. She's a friend. Yeah. I wasn't invited. Uh -oh. and, and did you feel hurt by that? The kids haven't chosen me once. Mm. They haven't even chosen to not choose me. Well, they chose you like before when you were like a, you know, you were just turning on ladies underwear and doing your best. But the kids never chose me. <laughs> the kids not once. Have you been nominated? No. And the Rosanna was? I don't think she was nominated. I think she was there. Oh, okay. Wearing a fluffy dress. That's fun. Miranda Sings Sh was there. The kids chose her. Colleen. <laughs> What do you guys think about this uh, Mr. Mr. B Mr. B shit Mister. this sh this week? Do you see this? Is that what it's come to? What? <laughs> what, do you guys, what do you guys think about? What, what do, you do you think guys? about Mr. Beast? The guy's got some fire ideas, I think. I mean, what, what what's the new no, thing? What's the no, new thing that he's that He fuck it. This is like the craziest late stage capitalism thing I've ever seen. Where he has his chocolate brand. And he posted a photo. <laughs> Do you know yeah. about this? No, I kind of I, don't. I'm stunned that you don't, Miles. Yeah, what happened? So he posted his chocolate bar in Walmart, and the display was all mixed up. And it was a before photo and an after photo of fixing it. And he goes, hey, guys, if you see my chocolate, can you clean up the display in Walmart? Gonna be hiring people to do that, but like in the immediate, oh my God. do me a solid. And so you go into the replies, and everyone's like, "Yes, sir, Mr. B, sir, reporting for duty, sir. Whatever you say, sir. I love you so much. Are you my father?" And it's like people, real fucking people, going out into the world to their local Walmart, cleaning up Mr. B's chocolate display. Oh my God! To make Daddy happy. 
And it's like, Weird. I don't know this fucking dork behavior that Mr. <laughs> Beast fans, that Elon Musk stands. No, that, like, it's crazy. It's, it's, we've entered like this new age of serfdom where people yeah. are so horny to be subjugated yeah. by their, their billionaire master. Mm. And I just, yeah. I think it's the same part of people's brain that make them like Trump. And I'm not trying to say that Mr. Beast is as bad as Donald Trump. No. I just don't understand why there are these people out there I, there's yeah. no other way to say it. They're yeah. horny for a master. And you know what I'll say too? <laughs> you know, uh, Jimmy, call him by his first name, friend of the show. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think that he, I mean, he obviously doesn't think he's doing anything wrong because to him, he's just like, well, I have this audience and like kids would be excited to go do this thing. And I get that mentality too. I think that what it is, Zach, is it is a byproduct of the grind culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that grind culture has taught us that if we kind of like suck up to someone on Twitter or we go out to the Walmart and we clean it up, that maybe we'll be noticed. Yeah. A popular quote that I don't remember who it was by and I don't remember who said it and don't fact check me <laughs> was people think that they are all millionaires who are down on their luck mm -hmm. and not people uh. who are poor by design. Uh, so, anyway, so it's like for people who are like, oh, well, you obviously have to work hard. And it's like, those people are not necessarily well off. Yeah. They just think that, well, if I work hard enough, then I can be a millionaire. And that's like, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. It's yeah. just, I just am down on my luck. Like I've had bad luck lately. It's a great perspective. And I and I bet you I'm being unfair to the, when by calling it dorkiness, because it's probably desperation. It's hoping sure. to find a lottery ticket to mm -hmm. get out of the shitty circumstances of your life that again, are by design of the mm -hmm. systems that we live in. Um, and, and like, Mr. Beast is someone who's very easy to dunk on because he's the biggest, right? So people yeah. like to hate on him. I I've met him. I think he's a really nice man yeah. who earnestly likes what he does. And I think he genuinely also, like, he has found his fucking thing. Like, sure. it's not like he's doing evil stuff. And people dunked on him. Like, he made that video about giving a treatment to um, the blind the blind and stuff like that. It was a, a treatment where we just called it the blind. It's a treatment that is really, really inexpensive that uh, people can get and they <gasps> will stop uh, being blind. That like there's a, you know, a very, very common, like it's some giant portion of people who are blind that it will, um, you know, allow them to see. And so he gave that procedure to a ton of different people. Oh. People are dunking on him for various reasons. I think he's like a catalyst. People dunk on him a lot, but I actually think he's not. Well, okay. I, I think the problem with that video is that it didn't take a second sure. to investigate why this is a thing. Yeah. What are the societal structures mm -hmm. that are making it that we have a very yeah. curable blindness that is not being cured? Yes. And it's because of corporate greed. And mm -hmm. instead he goes, look how fucking awesome I am. Yeah. I did this great thing. Yeah. And then when people get mad about it, which... People are going to be mad about anything, anything you yeah. do. Um, but people are using you as an example to talk about this societal injustice and the fact that you didn't take an opportunity to talk about this societal injustice. And your mm. response is just, why aren't you praising me for the good I did? Yeah. And I'm sorry that if you're super fucking wealthy and your charity is purely motivated by, where's my praise? I did good thing. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also if you're if I'm Mr. Beast and I got successful at a very young age and I'm this millionaire who everyone adores for the most part, I probably do think that life is a meritocracy. Sure. Like uh -huh. you, you know what I mean? He like, worked hard. My lived experience is that it's yeah. a meritocracy. And it's hard to pull yourself out of your lived experience when you have that. Um, and I think that that's true a lot for a lot of people who grew up rich too, mm -hmm. that like, uh, by the way, Miles, you said the word meritocracy and you got so much hotter. Please continue. Meritocracy. <laughs> um, but I do think that for a lot of people who grew up, you know, whatever, yeah. rich and then um, are Nepo babies, they also think it's a meritocracy because right. for sure they worked hard. Like, right. they, you know, if you have to be an actor, you have to do anything, you have to work hard. But the issue is that they started at a certain place that other people didn't have to start to. And they're like, well, look, I worked hard and I got what I needed. So I'm going to tell other people to do that. Anyway, <laughs> we really covered it, Zach. So are you guys, well, I mean, my big question is, should we go clean up some chocolate at our local Walmart? I think we should do yeah, it. Yeah, sort of. I think we should do it. I would yeah. imagine that the Los Angeles, the, the Burbank Walmart is immaculate. The Mr. Beast chocolate display could not be <laughs> fucking cleaner because there's so many little YouTubers here that would love to go clean it. Do you want to make a video called I Fucked Up Mr. Beast Chocolate Display at every Walmart in LA? Yeah, I do. But the Beast Army would come for you. And Zach, Beast I have to say, I don't know where I'd stand then. <laughs> If Mr. Beast sent his army after you and I had to choose between Mr. Beast and my buddy Zach, I don't know. What That's I'd a do. trolley problem I ain't willing to solve. If Mr. Beast was on a fucking trolley 
and he was headed towards you, I would push a button to make him go faster. <laughs> if it was Mr. Beast or my entire family, <laughs> I would plow through my family so that Mr. Beast could continue to make the world's greatest chocolate. Thank you, Mr. Beast, sir. We love you, sir. Give me a Lamborghini, Mr. Beast, for trolleying my family. For $10,000, I'll murder all my friends and family for you, sir. Yeah, that's good. Trolley problem, Colleen Ballinger or Mr. Beast? With Colleen, you're killing two people. I guess I... <laughs> Her and Miranda. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miranda sings, to be exact. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting, Zach. No, but I do think that we should start maybe a war with Mythical. I agree, or, by the like, way. some somebody. Why are we not fucking hanging out with those cool kids over there all the time, Zach? We want to go play with the kids <laughs> at the Mythical. Come on, Dad. <laughs> well, do you want to play with them or do you want to fight with them? Well, that's a good point. Okay, so I, I so think it'd be fun if we had a lunch in or something. <laughs> this is why <laughs> I don't. Soiree. This is why I don't bring you by because every time someone from Mythical comes and films with us, you say, "Let me get them. Let me get them." I have to <laughs> lock you in this room, <laughs> and you're snarling and banging, and we have to we have to ADR the whole video. I know. And you know that Josh would snap you. Yeah, he's a buff man. He's a buff man. Yeah. People said that I looked like Rhett and Link combined the other day <laughs> on, on the internet. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Nicki Minaj went on Ellen and was like, you need a, you need a nemesis. Interesting. No, wait, yeah. Nicki Minaj went on Ellen and said what to Ellen? You need a nemesis to like hike up the views. It was but, actually very interesting. Oh, that's interesting, Rainy. Yeah. Who do you think that that person is for you? Oh. Do you have someone in mind? Young Gravy, probably. I wish. Oh man! Can you imagine all the all the songs that he would come out about me, rapping about me? I'm gonna cut that clip and put it everywhere I possibly can. <laughs> can you imagine all the songs <laughs> Young Gravy would rap about me? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's actually now that I think about it, a fatal flaw. Hmm. Who should I start beef with? Does the beef need to be mutual? Yeah, because otherwise it's just like a Selena Gomez, Haley Bieber situation where it's like Haley Bieber is like <laughs> hating on Selena and Selena's like, it's okay. It feels it's okay. like a beef though at this point. Selena Gomez doesn't give a shit. No, Selena, yeah, Selena Gomez is like writing in the comments of the, the eyebrow thing. It's like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. I know it's not about me. Mm. But when they started coming for Taylor Swift, then she got, there was like an old video that resurfaced about Taylor Swift. Uh, her being like Taylor Swift's new album. Who did? Haley Bieber. On on Kimmel we or on Fallon. We cannot be talking about Haley Bieber again. <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. mean, I think we should do a whole episode dedicated. <laughs> what if we do the, you know, the special we did about disability and COVID? <laughs> 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 but we do it about Haley Be the Haley Bieber Selena situation, and it's just as thoughtful somehow. Um, every day there's ones of Haley Bieber out there who are suffering. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, so you do, it does have to be mutual. Otherwise, it's it's cringe. I think you should start you. beef with like another similar type of person to you at like a different digital media company. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Miles, do you want to talk about the YouTuber who big leagued you? I do, Zach, but I can't. <laughs> and you know I can't. But no, I got big time by somebody. And you know what? It, that's Here's the lesson. Yeah. Don't ever fucking big time me. Because you your name's on a list. What's that? The little glimmer in my eye when I said yeah, that. Yeah, you little had a little smirk. glimmer. No, I, Have you I, want, do you want to talk about this a little bit? I can't name the person. I know you can. But I'll talk about it. So I feel I, like you deserve it. I thank you. I, I got big leagued. I am obviously a creator. Yeah. I got big leagued by a fucking YouTuber. And the, here's the thing, though, about being big leagued. I'm a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm friendly. Yeah. Zach? You're a big friendly giant. Thank you're you a so much. BFG. Thank you so much, Zach. I would say you're a big friendly dude. Big BFD. BFD. Big fat dick. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So, um, no, I I had a situation where I was supposed to collaborate with somebody. A YouTuber who you may or may not know, who may or may not be friends with us. It's possible that you know that. It's possible that you don't. It's just somebody, somebody I've, somebody I've I would say, worked with. Huh. Worked with and huh. met... Socially. Met, met socially. Yeah, met socially. Okay, met I'm socially triangulating out of Los Angeles. in my... <laughs> I, I don't want to give too many details. In my mind, I think this is Colleen Ballinger, but keep going. It was Colleen Ballinger. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, this is somebody that like I was I was d- set to do something uh, with this person, and they canceled so last minute with such a lie that I yeah. knew it was a lie. And then I responded in kind with a sweet little message. As you do, you're you're a big because I'm a big I'm a big boy. I'm not gonna like whatever like what start yeah. beef. God forbid, unless this starts the beef. And I responded with a sweet little message back to nothing. Whoa. Radio okay. silence for now, at this point, four months. And you know what's the lesson out there? Be nice. Because I'm now in the back of my head thinking, I want to get as successful as possible. Yeah. Just so yeah. I can fucking ghost this person. In a public sphere. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this is somebody I'll probably encounter. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, arguably in m- several months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a plan? What are you going to do? The audience. Be is, totally nice. There's going to be, uh, they're going to be guessing. Let me say this. You're my, nice. my mentality, because I've thought about this over and over. Yeah. Because it's my head echoes. But I thought <laughs> if I encounter this person. Yeah. I'm going to be totally nice. Of course you are. Because they are immediately, upon seeing me, upon laying eyes on me, yep. going to know what they have done. Yep. yep. So it's like the biggest gift of all is to not try to be inflammatory to this person yeah. and to be the bigger person. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. This was a barn burner. And if an you're epi. listening out there, still not a collab. <laughs> 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 This was a barn burner. And by the way, speaking of controversy, we are fucking laying it out there. Yeah. yeah. That's a really, that's real shit. Yeah, that's just real I was shit. thinking of starting a silly little beef, but that's an actual beef. No, this, this one's too almost too real. It's like the stakes are pretty high. Well, it's only one-sided, and ultimately it's just that like, yeah, I... Uh, I mean, here's my thing on big time, like quote-unquote big timing. It's like if you agree to do something... It doesn't matter how big or how small the other person is. You know it, what I'll like, say? Literally though? doesn't matter. Right. And I get and I get yeah. that, and I agree with you. Although I would say also, if I had made uh, plans with somebody I totally didn't know, yeah, then if they not big time, but if they cancel last minute or something, I'd be like, oh, that sucks. But like, yeah. you know, like it'd be a favor thing. If you know the person in real life, yeah, it really softens the blow. Yeah. Ryan and Shane have stinky armpits. <gasps> yeah. Well, here's a question for you, Zach. Mm. Do you have? Um, I've just talked about sort of an industry enemy of mine. <gasps> yeah. What is an industry enemy of yours and how have they wronged you without naming them what they did? Because <sighs> I know that you have them. <laughs> now, can you think of one in particular? You just know that I'm a person I that can, has... I can think of several people you've been like, yeah, fuck that guy. Oh, interesting. Okay. But like, I, I, I'm curious to hear like what one is on fresh on your mind of someone that like sort of wronged you or that you met that did something you didn't like. I'm living in the post honeymoon glow. I ain't got nothing. You don't have any uh, any fire behind you right no, now. No, can you can you whisper one to me and then I'll. Do you think? Do you feel um, ousted by Emma Chamberlain? You feel like you're on the outs. I don't feel ousted. She just got so famous. She got too famous for us. Yeah. She, yeah, she was a, she was a bad texter. There was a period of time yeah. where she was going to do binge watch of, with her videos, right, right, which is a series that Zach and I did on one rainy afternoon <laughs> five and a half years ago. Was, no, it wasn't five; it was just so long ago. I was trying to figure out like an alternative to eat the menu, so we're like, "What else can we complete? Oh, let's complete the channel. We'll do the donuts. <laughs> oh, what if that turns oh. into an interview show? We'll have Emma come in and watch all her videos." With me, and she was down. That's funny. <laughs> there yeah. was one time we were doing a merch photo shoot, and we hear like "Yo, try guys!" and like <laughs> it's like a like an Escalade, and in the back seat, Emma Chamberlain's like sticking her head out the window with iced coffee, and she like hopped out and hung out with us, and I think that's we talked so- about that video, and she was excited, and oh, that's so funny. Yeah. She skyrocketed to fame and yeah. changed her number. <laughs> no, I, she, not, she blocks I, I just I just never reached out again. Yeah, the industry is funny that way. Yeah. yeah. Where all of a sudden someone's gonna just someone so big and popular. Alive. And I think that's gonna happen to Rainy. I think Rainy's gonna I can't wait. I think Rainy's <laughs> gonna you. supersede us all. My astrology chart did say that I'd be a little bit famous. <laughs> <laughs> um well anyway, everyone, I guess we gotta get to the final uh, segment of the show here. Yeah. Well, if you need beef, maybe you need some advice. And this is uh, one of our favorite segments. Our producer, Miles B, gets to get on the microphone and give some advice. Mm -hmm. This is advice that'll go for Miles. 
Oh my gosh. Here's the Sid, Sacks a bitch, motherfuckers rich, driving in this Tesla like he's sick. Let me get a hit. Dude's got a body like a broken puppet. With those glasses, little guy is looking like a fucking muffin. 2023! We're taking Cornfield down! Put your hands in the air. Plus, <laughs> he's short. Uh, what just happened? Was the new <laughs> How themes? long have you been sitting on that? Did I'm, you walk in today? You knew that was on the docket? I made that this morning. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The new theme song for advice that will go for miles <laughs> is, is a, a yeah. diss track. I guess, yeah. It, 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 it's a diss track for you. It seemed, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm reading too much into the lyrics. <laughs> But it seemed like it was slightly pointed at at me. Yeah, I guess uh, so. So I guess the artist who made it <laughs> seemed like they didn't care for you. <laughs> seemed, huh. seemed like they just had some like it was kind of pot shots though. It wasn't like anything too specific. Yeah, I, something about a little broken body. Yeah, they said your body's like a broken puppet. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you and with the glasses and your nose, you look like a muppet. What's up with my nose? I don't know. You have a pretty normal nose. I mean, I have a fucking honker from hell. So, like, I guess I'm the one to talk. <laughs> I guess it's yeah. an honor to yeah. be on the artist's mind. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> Big time. Can Did I be you orchestrate the conversation to get to beef? No. And then, because it's like, oh, we need a feud. And all of a sudden, no, uh oh, <laughs> here's a diss track. Fully, I just made that this morning and was like, I don't know what there is to do. But I also was thinking, I was like, I used to put a lot of effort into these songs. Yeah. I haven't done one in a while. Miles, can I tell you? Yeah, for sure. What's up? It was a really good song. Kind of a banger, though, right? Yeah, it was pretty fucking The lit. gunshots. <laughs> yeah. The, the gunshots, fucking... the baby. The baby. Was that Julian? No. He doesn't say mama. He's two months old. <laughs> I wish that he did. No, that was just a mama sound effect from Storyblocks. Shout out to our sponsor, <laughs> Storyblocks. They're actually not, but we do use them. So are you... Are you gonna give advice for the, um, the advice about? Are we hmm. are we cool? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to be a tidy little boy? Sorry, I'm just kind of having a hard time oh focusing. Have but. you ever wanted to be germ free? Hey, mom, can you come pick me up? On an afternoon that is going to be salsa. Yeah, no, they're just like, I don't know. He like wrote a song about me. I just can't wait to be, to be clean. clean. Oh, nice. I'm, I mean, I think he meant it as a joke. Use an antibacterial to... Lysol wipe. He's talking about like Lysol wipes or something. <laughs> Keeps playing this really. I've been opening up a little packet of <laughs> antibacterial wipes. He keeps playing this air horn that's like really loud in my ear, and for some reason it's only loud in my ear. Because yeah. sometimes <laughs> it's better to have a wipe that's clean than a sauce that's clean. Like, I think I'm his boss, but I'm not even really <laughs> sure anymore. So what I've done is essentially I have a little wipe be pack. Yeah. What do you mean if I try talking this. to him? I I, I've been talking to him for the last hour. I need to buy those because I've been just spraying anti-back spray on a paper towel when I need one. And that's one way to do it, Rainy. But let me tell yeah. you about the wipe is going to be sopping with the cleaning yeah. fluid. What did yeah. I do to deserve it? Like mom, perfectly. why are you taking his side? <laughs> tell your mom to check her texts. <laughs> mom, he says check your texts. And she'll know. And that you'll know? Yeah. Why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> okay, thanks, Mom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, get a little wipe. Is this because I unscrewed the microphone? Have a good ass week. Rainy hit us with a theme song. Oh, Haley Bieber is shady. Banana. Here's the Sid, Sacks a bitch, motherfuckers rich, driving in this Tesla like he's sick, let me get a hit, dude's got a body like a broken puppet, with those glasses little guy is looking like a fucking muppet, 2023, 
We're taking Cornfield down. Put your hands in the air. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> he's short. Song is I, really good. <laughs> I'm I'm average height, just for the record. Well, five five. It's not average. <laughs> <laughs> And scene, we're best friends. That's right, Zach. Love you, pumpkin. (laughs) 